Hello everybody, 
Welcome to what is absolutely a one shot. Um, welcome to part three of Oops All Kobolds Rise of the Red Scales. I am joined by five terrifically talented human beings who have agreed to waste part of their weekend playing this silly game with me. And I love each and every single one of you for it. So let's go around and say hello. I'm just going to go clockwise on my OBS. So playing Xandrus, we have Lauren. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for tagging along for a three count of three episodes. <laughs> I'm really glad to have you here. Super jacked, as you can tell. Let's go. Super jacked. Uh, hoping we can continue that energy. Uh, <laughs> Maddie playing Kibbles. Good luck matching that. No, I'm trying to make it the opposite. I, I can't do that right now. I don't have brain function. Uh, hi, I'm Maddie know. and... Uh, I am so excited to be back for Kibble's glorious death, as I have been saying for the last three episodes. <laughs> yeah, two episodes. It's going to happen. She's going to die, and it's going to be beautiful. Look, but yes, I, thank you for having me. I can't wait to... If it's going to be this. any session, it'll definitely be this session. Stuff is going to get crazy. Um, third, playing Onyx, we have Sally. Hey, you guys! This is going to be great. Daphne being played by Anna Margaret. Hello, I'm so excited. It should be super, super fun. Thanks for having me. And last but not least, one one of two parts of the kobold cereal, Kibble's Crunch, we have Mav playing Crunch. Yeah! <laughs> Let's go! This is true the finale because we only have a book for four hours, so we cannot go any longer. We can't go over time. This you. is all we got. Yes, that's we all we can do. We are finishing when we finish. It's Finished. happening. It's going right. to happen. It might not be a pretty ending, but God damn it, we're going to hit an ending tonight. A four shot! <laughs> you know what? Four. You know what? Don't do that to me. Don't do it. All right, few announcements before we jump in with this chaos crew. First of all, uh, please clip your favorite moments from tonight's session. That helps us a lot because honestly, it's those clips and those small little moments that help get our stream and game seen by more people. So please clip your favorite moments. We appreciate it. Um, second, this is an 18 plus stream for language, for people smoking, drinking, whatever. Just, it's not for kids, all right? Just because everyone is kobolds and cute little lizard folk doesn't mean they're kids. That's for kids. All right. Um, announcement three. Let's see what day is today. Uh, on Saturday, this coming Saturday, we will be back. Oh, no, we're off again. That's right. We had to be off. So not this coming Saturday, but a week from Saturday. Uh, the Wild Beyond returns on Misty Mountain Streaming with myself as Dungeon Master and Lauren and Mav joining me in that weird little adventure. Uh, please do check Thousand Faces TTRPG streaming schedule because Lauren and I are also starting to stream more video games and all of that. And we would love to have you around. But the most important announcement I can make is there's going to be a big announcement at the end of the session. So please stick around so that I can talk about the announcement that I have of Wait, what? future activities <laughs> with these wonderful folk. We were literally just talking about it five minutes before the show. Oh, see, my brain uh, just went <laughs> Why are you not telling me? I'm oh. pregnant. That's the secret. Oh. I know. I know. Who's I'm, I'm starting to show. Uh, you already know. No, that's oh, just, that's that's just my oatmeal. The all right, then. That's just my oatmeal. <laughs> I think with all those announcements out of the way, let's go ahead and run that intro video so that we can get into tonight's final session of The Rise of the Red Scales.
our story focuses on five kobolds, five servants, minions of the Dragon Queen, Aramanthal Yavaraxena. Our five kobold servants that we have been following, Xandris, Kibbles, Onyx, Daphne, and Crunch, were trusted with a mission for what feels like ages, but in reality it's only been a couple weeks. The Dragon Queen has abandoned her lair and left her kobold servants unattended and without instructions. The kobold servants split themselves years ago into two tribes, the Red Scales and the Blue Scales. Don't tell them, but their scales all look kind of purple. It's a metaphor that we're all the same. Um, <laughs> and with the power vacuum came an opportunity to fill that void. Some members of the Blue Scale tribe decided that it was time to claim the magic items that belonged to the Dragon Queen in order to therefore seize power for themselves. The Red Scales were not so fond of this idea, but there were differing opinions on how to go about it. Some insisted that our five leading this should merely attempt to defend the magical items and vaults and not claim those items for themselves that belonged, Phonic, I hear you, that belonged to the Dragon Queen. Others amongst the Red Scales thought that that path led to failure and that in order to defeat the Blue Scales, they must claim these powerful artifacts for themselves. And so set off these five and very quickly made it clear which direction they went as they solved an ancient riddle and claimed the magic items left within, took some of the magic items left in a treasure chest uh, at the red scale lair, proceeded further in, found a particular vault that they managed to get by the defenses of, unlock the arcane locks and plunder as well. <laughs> Over the course of this claiming of incredibly powerful magic items, the group encountered a group of humans that were very quickly burned to a crisp by a fireball thrown by one of the magic items that Onyx had claimed. The group has found several chambers in this vast underground tunnel system, one with a magic portal that seemed to lead to a mind flayer colony a beholder lair, and one other place that couldn't be identified. They also found a shrine to the five-headed dragon queen goddess, Tiamat. And in the course of traveling, they also had to go through a series of tunnels filled with hallucinogenic gas, where they conversed with a strange and fanatical kobold. When we last left, our five, though, they were, they had made their way fairly far into the tunnel system and were approaching, though still with some steps between, the big pile, the true dragon's hoard, where all of the dragon's, dragon queen's best goodies were left, and they were racing to beat the blue scales there. Right before we left our kobolds, Crunch used a particular magical item, a cloak of the bat, to polymorph himself into a bat and s search a little bit ahead as the group was approaching the lair of someone known as the Alchemist. Upon scouting the area, Crunch in bat form noticed several blue scales who seemed to be attempting to get through the doors of the artificiary where the alchemist resided, only for those doors to detonate outwards. The crumpled, broken bodies of these seven blue scales laid scattered across the cavern floor while stepping across and on their corpses. 
emerged from the door a horrific sight. A golem made of different pieces of flesh from dozens of different creatures, kobold, salamanders, all types that have been sewn and melded together to create this abomination. And chained to its collarbone and flying overhead, four winged red demonic creatures, imps. And it was with Crunch flying back to his crew that we left. So before you arrive and discuss Crunch, I just want to remind you all of the general layout of where we are. The portal room, the Shrine of Tiamat, and the Artificiary are all in the same general layer of the tunnel system. You can entirely bypass this section if you wish and proceed straight to the lava river that separates this part of the tunnels from the big pile. I just want to make sure you know the general layout, but in order to go backwards would be to admit failure. So as Crunch returns, we have two real choices for the group to decide. Do you continue to investigate the artificiary or do you do you bypass it and continue on to the lava river and with that in mind the four of you now see after hearing this loud explosion the sound of rubble falling dust settling and suddenly <laughs> the little even smaller than usual bat appears and apparently sounds like a cat. And this polymorph you can break whenever you wish. Crunch, just so you know. Okay. So, uh... Yeah, there's this monstrosity-looking thing down there. There's a bunch of dead blues, though. It killed all of them. Um... So, if... If we want to go that way, it's like a, it's like this big, um, monster made of, like, other things with, like, things flying above it. But, uh, yeah, it, it busted the door down to where the creepy old fuck lives. Yeah. Um. I mean, if it killed blue scales, it might be a friend? Also, I have no idea what you want me to see when you describe this monstrosity, but I am currently seeing a totem pole of uh, random body parts. Yeah, that's, 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 about, that's about it. I was hoping I was wrong. Big is the totem pole of body parts. Real big. Real, real big. So, if it's our friend, we could ride it and leap over the river of lava and life is easy. But it, if it's already handling the blue scales, maybe we leave it to handle them and then we go make sure we protect the pile? Question. Did it Onyx. look friendly? Fuck no, not, not, come on, keep it a buckle with you, I'm keep it 100 with you, no, absolutely not. Okay, but Crunch, how many faces did it have, and of those faces, how many were smiling? Maybe it was just kind of... I do have bad days sometimes. Maybe he was just feeling a little gassy and that's why he's a little on edge. Exactly, he might have just been having a kind of alright day and maybe there's seven smiles and six... Gastrointestinal upset. Yeah. Were you smelling right. anything? <laughs> All right. So the faces that were on it were more than my fingers, more than Crunch's fingers, more than yours, and like two of yours. So they were not smiling at all. There was just rage. I know that look. Single smile. Rage. No smile. No. Smiles? no. Maybe he needs a hug. 
I, mm. <laughs> I <have a> Listen, <laughs> I'm Crunch is usually down the brawl wherever it is. That thing though, I, I'm, Crunch is usually not scared. Crunch doesn't get scared, okay? But that thing, that thing out there, I don't want to fuck with it. I didn't say we were gonna fight it. I said we were gonna make him happy and then use it to fight what we need fought. Crunch, is the thing already fighting the blue scales? They're all dead. The door They bust the door open and they're all like dead. Like one of, half of one was over there and then the other half was in the wall. So I was just, just yeah. So maybe we've already kind of done half your plan. We didn't make it happy, but it looks like it is already helping us fight the things we wanted to fight. Hmm. I guess, but like, I'm just visualizing sitting like right on its shoulders and riding in the battle. And I think it would be a glorious ending. I'm just saying. Oh, well, anyway, Crunch, um, was it following you at all? Should we be concerned standing in the middle of the hallway talking? No, I... There's always time no. for talking. Oh, yeah. But maybe He's not man over there. as much. Well, uh, be, be honest with you, um, I don't think it saw Crunch because it was more concerned with all the crushing and the killing of the blues. So... At this exact moment, <laughs> as Crunch says that, you all hear from, because you stopped about 50 or so feet from where the tunnel curved and opened into this larger cavern where Crunch went to investigate. <clears throat> you hear from that general direction, No! 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 <laughs> Along with just a sickening, wet, <laughs> squelching sound. Was that you, Crunch? Uh, yeah, no. No, that was the thing that lived down the hallway. Um, that was a thing. Why are we going that... this way? Yeah, why are we going this way? Let's just go the other way. Like, let's just... I I am team Crunch's team that way. Not no! this way. Uh, lead the way, Crunch. Can we do our elephant again? I think that's the only way we're going to be able to fight this thing. Why are we fighting the thing? Let's just... The elephant, the elephant is gone. Um... I mean, could we sneak by it? Because why are we even going that way? Can't well, we no, just no, 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 wait, hey Daphne, don't panic. It's okay, we haven't died yet. Um, could we, well, we were gonna go and see if the alchemist had anything that could help us out. I think that was the alchemist getting squished. So we could go and sneaky sneaky and well, I could go sneaky sneaky. I'm very sneaky. Um, I'll go sneaky sneaky, loot the alchemist, take all his lovely, lovely shinies and magical potions that are not shattered, like he is, and um, come right back. It'll be fun. You have a death wish. I or, do or have a death wish. To die? <laughs> so, so, Kibbles, it, it, here's the thing the alchemist is, is quite alive. Crunch heard him laughing maniacally behind it, the monstrosity, when he was doing all of that stuff. He's he quite can, alive. can go talk to him, and he can give me all his stuff, and then his stuff didn't get all squished. I want his potions. I feel like what he creates might be really, really helpful, and I just want to meet him. He's like, I have heard so many stories about him. I just want to see him. You know? I mean, I don't have to, you know? I'll, I'll go with you guys. It's fine. I don't get to see stars. I don't get to meet the alchemist. It's fine. But... I, I, I don't know. How, how about this, Kibbles? I'll make a deal. Crunch will make a deal with you. All right? Will you swear on it? I'll swear on baby. Right? No. 
Watch the video. If you come with us and leave the alchemist alone, Crunch will take you out to go see stars. You, do you promise? If you promise not to run off. You'll take me to actually see the stars? Yes. The night ones. With the big nice round one. rock out there. Yeah. They're prettier to look at during when the big blue the blue blue rock is outside. Okay. I if you if I don't get to see the stars before I die, I will haunt your ass. But I will not sneak away as long as you promise to take me to see the stars. Deal. Deal. And I'm okay. gonna and Crunch is gonna whip his tail out and like that to do a pinky promise with the tail. Uh, Kibbles will do the same, only her tail is like kind of half cut off, so she's just gonna kind of like walk closer to you to try to like reach it up. Deal. Okay. We will, uh, we'll leave the alchemist, I guess. All right. Well, lead the way. On the road again, I got to do you back on the road again. You always start us the best way. <laughs> you gotta set the fucking tone! Zan. So, the plan is to go to the lava river and circum or circumvent this? Yeah, we, we, we're not gonna mess with them right now. Well, in that case, you have to backtrack a little bit, rather sidetrack, and it's your choice. In order to get to to get to the lava river without going past the artificiary, you have to either pass back by the shrine of Tiamat or the portals room. Which way do you want to go? Who wants to open another portal? I do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can we? Wait, Onyx. There's one we don't know. Do you about. mean that? Oh, wait, oh, wait, stop. Do you mean that? You can open. Sounds fun. Might as well when in Rome. I can't Where's believe that? I'm hearing this. Did, did did we go into the same room? Were Were you all there? <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? We have a mission. Let's just go back, go across the lava. So you're wanting to go through the shrine? Yeah, we didn't die in the shrine. But it's when will boring. we ever be back here, though? Yeah. Probably after we finish defending the pile, and then we have to head back home. I'm not going to die home. today. You uh, have, wait, what? Yes, you do. You have to go back because I got to show you the stars. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just thinking once we're done our mission, we just leave. Yeah, but to leave. Kibbles, I'll let you where guys do you think decide. the front door is? The shrine is or the portal? I think we'll. Just, uh, well, my vote's for the portal because it could be really, really cool, but we can just go to the shrine. It's fine. Whatever. This is absurd. What is happening? I'm going to start walking towards <laughs> back towards the shrine. Okay. <laughs> Daphne. Oh. Anyone else? I was going to I was going to after she she walks towards the shrine, I was going to turn around and put my arms at Okay, everyone, it's clear that she left her clipboard at home and she's a little disorganized right now. So I just think it would be better if everyone would just fall in line and get this done so we don't have to hear her bitch about it. I'm already going to. Shout back. Do you hear that? Do you fucking hear that? We're fucked. <laughs> you're as cold as ice. You're willing to sacrifice my sanity is what you're willing to sacrifice. I don't know. I think she's kind of cool. 
I, I like her a lot. I like that she keeps us all in line because, Jesus Christ, there's so many distractions. Oh, Crutch just thinks she's pretty. That's that's about it. Oh, that's true, um, too. Kibbles? Uh, I'm going to pull Onyx away a little bit, like after those three have followed. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to like lean in really close. Do you really mean we could open another portal? I mean, they're way up there with Xandas' shouting. As lovely as it is, we could just do, 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 go back to the portal. I fear if we open a portal by ourselves, something may go wrong. I think you would jump through, and I wouldn't be able to stop you. You're saying that like that's something going wrong. I'm gonna see if I can pick her up and drag her along with me. Kibbles, would you let Onyx pick you up and just, you know, kind of help move you along? I think, I think at first she'd do like the whole like waving her leg thing and then she'd just give up and just let her drag her. So you lied to me? No, she did not lie to you. I want to do it, but I want to do it for just different reasons than you do. Sorry, I keep looking down because you're in my arms. <laughs> What sort of reasons do you want to open the portal? I want to know what else is out there. Well, that's that's what I want to do. I want to... I think you want to fight I want something. To I don't want to fight. I just want to see. I want to see the stars. I want to touch grass. I want to smell what rain smells like, not rotting water. It just sounds beautiful. Maybe we should just leave and get on out of here. I mean, those portals lead you to bad places, but it's probably actually pretty nice upstairs. I mean, I don't know why I never left, but after I saw the stars through the portal, that's all I want. I don't even want to die much anymore. I just want to see the stars. Well, we can keep you alive. We've already promised you, Crunch promised you, you'll see the stars. I think Crunch is lying to me like you just did. We would never lie to you. You're part of our family. Can I also just point out how much I love that Kibble's way of showing how excited they are about something is, I don't even want to die anymore. (laughs) So you two and the group, you converse as you retrace your way through the smaller tunnels that lead you back near, but not necessarily through the Shrine of Tiamat. If you want to go into the Shrine again, you totally can, or do you all just want to proceed straight, uh, moving forward? Well, I'm gonna be, we're all gonna be following Daphne. Yeah, we're all I, I following think. Daphne. So Daphne makes that choice, which way she goes. Um, so we, when we were in the shrine, we saw the door that led to the lava. But so you're saying- um, it's less that there's a door through the shrine that leads to the lava and more the path you have to take takes you back near the shrine. So you don't have to go into the shrine to continue forward, but it is right there if you wanted to. I think I'm gonna peek in and just be like, we're on the right track, it's going well, and then just keep going. Again, as you poke your head in, you can't help but have that feeling of watchful gazes. You don't see anyone, of course, but you feel it. Okay. Yeah. You know, you know how we feel those eyes watching us. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's all you will feel. If you don't take me to see the stars every Mm -hmm. single day, when you try to sleep, I'll be there. I will poke you and tickle your feet and you'll never get a good sleep if you don't take me to see the stars. On that note. On that note. You did just remind me, when we're done with this, we've been feeling this watchful eye, maybe we need to return all the things we use to help defend, maybe we should return it to the shrine when we're done. Shrine is to Tiamat, not 
not our lady. Yeah, but like, do you feel the eyes on you in that shrine? Yeah, it, it's it's like you're never alone. It's not that bad, actually. Okay, maybe I'm misreading it. Wait, wait a minute. You just <laughs> said that you were going to haunt me and stare at me like that. And you just said that they weren't bad. But you just use it as a metaphor to what you're going to do to me if you're dead. As you're having this well, conversation, you all can't help but notice as the temperature has started to increase with every passing step. It's getting hot in here, so shut up all your mouths! It's really <laughs> hot in here. I feel like taking my clothes off. I wouldn't stop you. You're not I wouldn't stop you. Yeah, I'm only wearing some pants, but... The orange glow greets you before you see the chamber that you are heading to as it casts its way down the tunnel system. And eventually, you five emerge into a large oval chamber. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, wrong one. Uh, you emerge into a cavern that is filled with flickering red-orange hues. And flowing through this cavern, which is enormous, is a 15-foot wide river of lava. Part of the reason that your brilliant queen, Aramantho de Atharaxena, chose this location for her lair in the first place was the natural defenses of the lava river. There is a small pier on your side of the cavern made from obsidian that has been built onto the shore. However, there is no boat attached to it. The magical boat that all of you know, even if you've never seen, that the Dragon Queen uses either for visitors to her chambers or for her salamander servants is nowhere around. Perhaps it's moored at the other end, the other pier. Next to the pier, on your side, is one of the Dragon Queen's lair's speaking stones. The lava river that you can see exits this cavern and continues to flow. There are no, as far as you can see, banks or handholds on which you can walk along the edges of the river. I mean, don't we have a wand that makes a gateway? We could just go boop, boop. I mean, if we had a giant monstrosity, it probably could have just leapt us over the river and we could have ridden into battle, but boop, boop would work. The problem is you can't see the other pier. The lava oh, river continues through this cavern and out of sight. I fear we're going to have to walk until we find a boat. There's no way they would have picked it up and hoofed it out of this place. Rue, I mean, maybe that's what the stone is for? We could pick it up and be like, yo, bring the boat. Since you said that, anyone who okay. wishes to, who, uh, there are five of you, how many of you have proficiency in arcana? Let's see. I see Xandrus has half proficiency. I'll count that. Onyx. Yep. So for right now, Xandrus and Onyx, could you, and Kibbles, since you mentioned it, could the three of you make me arcana checks as you glance at the Sending Stone? Speaking Stone, excuse me. I'm just a nine. <laughs> I would love to just be a nine. Six. I got 11. 11? You know that this speaking stone is enchanted. You can, it's very clear. There are runes carved all over it in a combination of an arcane language that you aren't 100% familiar with and ancient draconic, the equivalent of old English. You feel like it's connected to 
the boat. But you're not 100% sure how. And you're definitely not sure how to work it. Can I pick it up? Like, how big is it? It is a, like, a little bit taller than you, small obelisk of stone that oh. is okay. placed and built there. Um, I'm just going to place my hand on it and say, Hey, Bo, we need you. Come to me. In, again, in ancient Draconic, but your fam your knowledge of contemporary Draconic allows you to at least understand as you hear a voice emanate from the speaking stone. Improper command word. Ah, shit. Um, who wants to scream a bunch of words at the stone until a boat comes? Boat! Improper okay. command. Nope. Are, you, are you saying it in Draconic? Say it in Draconic. I don't. Hither. I don't, I don't speak Draconic very well. Daphne, you seem to be learned. Why don't you do it? I'm just Actually, I do speak Draconic. And before you do that, uh, Daphne, and because Crunch didn't roll on the Arcana, could the two of you roll me history checks? Oh. I'm going to give you advantage because it is something that directly relates to where you live. You guys can do this. We'll try, there's two guys. I rolled a 19 and an 18, so. Oh, should I even roll? 18. Yes, you should still. Wait a minute, I also rolled a 19. I rolled a Let's 19 go. and an 11. So with advantage, so that's a 19 on the die for each of you, and what's the total? 19. 18. Oh God. <laughs> I, have a, I have a negative one. <laughs> I've got a zero, so 19. It's fine. So each of you remembers a different thing. <laughs> Crunch, you're looking at this river of lava, and in perfect Crunch fashion, the first thought that goes through your head is, oh, that looks hot. And then you remember something that you saw very recently. Something large, red, and almost boat-shaped that in all likelihood, having belonged to some ancient red dragon, would not be, inf would not be harmed by the flames and the heat. Daphne, you remember a rumor that you once heard relating to the speaking stones. They do indeed have a passcode known or that summons the boats for the salamander servants to be able to come and go conveniently. They naturally knew the passcode. Hmm. The only other person that you have heard who knows that code is the alchemist. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, Kibbles, do you remember how you were saying that we needed to see the alchemist? I kind of thought you were crazy because you had absolutely no reason. But like, <laughs> no, right here, wait, hold on. I want to tell you that I'm, I'm the type of person, the type of Kibble that will always, Cobalt that will always admit when I'm not right about something. And I'll be honest, I was like looking at the stone and I remembered this time that I was chatting with somebody after school and they were telling me all about the salamanders and how they like come and go in the boats. And we were like, how, who else knows this? I think the alchemist might know the password. And so, either, but, but, but to be fair, if we had just gone to the alchemist first, I might not have remembered that. And there's no guarantee that we would have asked for the passcode. And you're pretty confident that he was squished anyway. But I do feel like, for transparency's sake to the group, I need to let you know that I do think we maybe did need the alchemist because we don't have the password. Okay, that's it. That's what I've got. Way to just go in a full circle. Um, do you guys want me to go back and get the alchemist, or do we want to go together and get? But the is alchemist? he squished? No, no, no. Um, you said the alchemist was squished. Crunch said he lived. That was just some other poor soul. 
It's fine. He's alive. I think he... I think the monster, the totem pole of flesh, is actually his. Yes. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I do think mm-hmm. if we want to know the password to summon the boats, we might need to... I don't know if we should split up. That looked kind of terrifying, or I didn't see it, but the way Crunch described it sounds really terrifying. Totem pole of body. To, Onyx is going to just go... <sighs> And then literally start walking back to the alchemist. I will run after Onyx incredibly fast. I'm just gonna like go and take her hand, and we're just gonna walk down the down the hallway. Thanks for admitting you're wrong, Daphne. Yeah, no problem. I think it's really important to, when you're a leader to be like transparent well, and open. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, Zendris is gonna put uh, her hand on uh, Daphne's. Uh, you are the hero! You are the hero! <clears throat> uh, I'm really proud of you for admitting your faults. Good job. <clears throat> you know, I'm gonna whisper over to Xandris. I feel like Kibbles has been kind of... I don't know. Like, have you noticed that she's acting different? She was, she was being kind of mean. I think it's because she woke up this morning and every morning since the day she was born wanting to die. So really I think it's not a you thing. I think it's a. I think it's. I think it's a kibbles thing. I think it's called projection. Oh. And I, I think you're doing a great it. job. And kibbles is doing a great job too. Everybody's got their own thing going. Okay. Really quick, I did see Crunch trying to get a word in. Crunch is Crunch is doing that thing where gators or crocs just kind of sit with their mouths open just for a little bit while all this is going on and then snaps back oh well we could have used the scale in the other room to get across because okay. it's hot but it's not gonna hot hot like lava's hot all right but then the scale is hot also but safe to touch and oh. it's boat size Oh, that's, that, that's not a bad idea. Wait, we should call back up to those two that have already left. Maybe, hey, you know what? Maybe we want to investigate that instead. I also don't want to... Crunch also doesn't want to desecrate a, a shrine. I don't really want to do that either. That's, that's a holy spot, and TMS kind of cool, you know? Maybe that's our backup. Our backup backup. Okay. Don't we'll piss off TMS. It- We'll make it plan, plan C or D. I like the highest. E, F, G, A, J, J. Okay, Crunch believes you. So, where are we heading? Um, I mean, me and Onyx are heading directly towards the alchemist, and I'm assuming from the like, is there two ways you could go? You basically, now that we're on? once again, have to backtrack the way oh, okay. that you went. Right. Or you could <laughs> go a different way and come in from a different side. Um, it's up to you. I think we'll backtrack. Yeah, I'm gonna say, we're going to stick with the I started walking back the exact same way I knew, so I didn't get lost or anything. Okay. So, you do pass by once again the shrine to Tiamat and Crunch, you look in and you see suspended there that large red dragon scale you know would fit all five of you right there. Jew, what are you thinking? Uh, Crunch knows this could fit everybody. Crush doesn't want to destroy the shrine. It's like the door in the Titanic. We can all actually fit, you fucking selfish prick. Well, Should we get Titanic. it down? <laughs> it's, a stri- it's a story. It's a story. Oh, oh. Should we get it down? I no. feel like we've done enough damage in the sense of, you know, kind of spitting on the higher rule here by taking all the stuff we've already taken. Do you guys think this is like way worse. Mm. So, if you guys are worried, I can do it. 
I'm gonna leave anyway. It doesn't matter. You, so you have a death wish. Can no, 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 no. This thing. Can we even pick it up? Is it possible to pick it up? Firstly, and also, I don't have a death wish anymore. I just don't want to live here anymore. But I could take it, and then you guys aren't really defacing the shrine. It's just me. You so guys can all just. I could put like a rope on you, and you guys could just claim that you don't have. I think that there's this thing called guilt by association. And I'd be concerned. That's what the rope is for, because then it's as if I'm pulling you with me and you didn't really get a choice. It's a way I out. I think it's called being an accessory. Um, in which case, we're going to get in trouble anyway, so what do you need? Let's grab the scale. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to go right in. You. Uh, the two of oh, you. So we're, the so we're not her. going to the alchemist <laughs> anymore? I thought this was planned too. Daphne? I thought this was this was planned like C or D was. Like... Daphne, do oh, you yeah. want to face a totem pole of flesh, or do you want to face a literal god? Probably the pool of flesh, right? Oh. Don't you think like a yeah. literal god would be worse? Yeah. yeah, when you say it like that. <laughs> yeah, like actually, I feel like that like really did put it into perspective for me. Super and... good. I'm actually on this side. It walks over and stands next to yeah, Daphne. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure like I needed that. <laughs> that visualization, and now I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna go with the pretty lady and the music man. Um, I get my powers, Crunch gets his powers from Tiamat, so... Sorry. So you don't... You don't want me to grab this skill that my hands are literally on right now, that I could easily just, you know... Probably not easily, it looks big. That's what you're saying. Kibbles, put your hands in your pockets. Kibbles, I don't know what, 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 what are your thoughts? I thought you wanted to go to the alchemist. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling okay, some conflicting I vibes. To the I want to go to the alchemist, but you really didn't want to, and I just want you to be happy. So do you want to go to the alchemist? I, I really want to protect the pile, and not so, be smited by the person that gives me my powers. So you want to go to the alchemist? Yes or no? Say yes, okay, but I guess by the transitive property, like if the two things I want need to have an intermediary step, like yes, yes. I guess yes, I do. Yes or no? Okay. want to go, okay. Onyx again Onyx. goes, and then just <laughs> starts walking. <laughs> okay, that's all I wanted to Great, know. let's go, let's go, yes. I'm with you. <laughs> Okay, so the five of you retrace your steps. And <laughs> you start to, after about another half an hour, approach once again where you first stopped when Crunch went to investigate. And so you're still I'm gonna in pass the out tunnels. little granola bars to all of us and like little snacks. Be like, it's been a bit of walking. I know this is like a lot of exercise. Make sure y'all hydrate. Like it's a good Thanks, reminder. Mom. Everyone hydrate. You're going. I don't. Go. I don't take a granola bar. I'm gonna eat hers. <laughs> so you are still Do you in. Do not like granola bars? I also have trail mix. Here. Can we go? <laughs> I'm just gonna follow on. You all <laughs> are still in the tunnel system, but you're about 50 feet from where it opens up into where Crunch went to investigate. So that is where you all now are. What are we doing? Xandris, you're a decision maker. What do you think we should do next? <laughs> okay. I uh here's a thought. Here's your thought. I have a thing I could do if we wanna like get advantage on our attacks if we wanna fight. But then also Kibbles is really good at maybe not being seen. And you know, I don't use this very often, but if I want to, I can be pretty stealthy too. You just have to like, you know, rein it all in. So we have kind of two options. We could try to like sneak in, 
get the get the alchemist and then like pull him away from the monster and get the information or we could just like full send well how are we going to convince him to give us this information it might determine how we approach the situation I mean, i'll get the ever i'll get it I, I'll I have full get it. faith in Sandra's, and I've got some pokey knives. We can we can get okay. anything from him. Oh, we're I'll gonna torture him. I didn't say torture. A little light torture, Just, maybe. Okay, I have a thought. What's your thought? I have a thought. Mm. Uh, Crunch, where was the alchemist in the room? Just heard his voice. Didn't see. Okay. It was the only voice that wasn't crying out or screaming or what making the <coughs> noise. We try to sneak in. And then if we get close enough to the alchemist, I can teleport us like 30 feet away. And then maybe we could like interrogate and get the information. Daphne? Yeah? Would that make a lot of noise? I know magic can be really noisy sometimes, and I don't want to like go out there, sneaky, sneaky, almost there, and then boom, big spell, and we get killed by a flesh monster. So it does have a verbal component. Which is I loud could, because it's you. Well, I could whisper it. Can Question. you whisper? Question to the DM. How far can we see at this moment? Well, if you wanted, you could move forward a little bit more and peer into the larger cavern. Is there a place I could portal and portal to so we can pass by the cavern almost? So as you step out and just look to get a better understanding of what you're dealing with, about maybe a hundred feet across from where your tunnel enters the cavern, you see where the two large doors once were that have since been blasted onto the floor. One is still barely hanging by a single hinge. The other is about tw seven feet away. There is dust and rubble. This cavern between you and the doors, like I said, goes about 100 feet by about 70 feet. But the most noteworthy part of this cavern itself is right in the middle, though with small little walkways around it, is an enormous pit. That as far as the red scales have ever determined, for all intents and purposes, has no bottom. That's the current layout. Now, there is a like 10 foot wide pathway to the right. It's not like it would be hard to get around it, but that's what's there. You can, through the door, make me a perception check because you are a little over a hundred feet away. So you might not be able to see or hear everything. Let's see. It's a six. A six? A six. It's a sad All you six. can really make out is that there is a room beyond the door. You see a table. That's all you can really tell. Can we hear the monstrosity at all? From where we are? From where you are, uh, you... Let's see what your passive perception is, unless you want to move forward and make an active one. From where you oh. are, no. I'll follow uh, Onyx up. Go ahead and, and roll I'm going to look around for it. <laughs> My perception is so great, guys. Yeah, that's a two. Two? No, you do not. Uh, but I will also say, not only do you not hear it, you don't see it. And see, it's... you feel like you would. Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, Onyx, I don't know if you see anything, but I... I think it's clear. That's a good thing and a bad thing. I don't hear it either. Do you guys want me to sneaky and scout ahead? 
I'm going to look back at the rest of the crew and I'm going to go, we don't see it or hear it, you guys. Come on out. It's safe. And I will. Ah, okay. So, okay. it's nowhere. So now as you, you all step out a little bit farther, I will say the person with the highest passive perception, dear God, y'all, um, is Xandris. So, so I was like, eight, ten, eight, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Xandris, as you step out, you don't see or hear the horrifying creature that was described to you. In fact, you don't see anyone. But you can, from where you are, hear a soft voice. It sounds like it is pitched only for itself. But because this is a cavern, things echo. And you simply hear, Yes, yes, good. This will fix what has been missing. Good, good, yes. Do I know whereabouts <clears throat> that sound is coming from? Definitely coming through those doors. Through the doors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to motion to lay low, go slow, and listen to the door. Okay. Could you make me a stealth check? Oh, Lord. If you stealth enough, make me a stealth check. That's pretty good. Got 17 on the die. 18 on the die? Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. I fucked it up. I. It, does not beat that, no matter what you're, even if you have a minus six. Uh, <laughs> so, actually, more, got a roll for. I have a plus four, sorry. All fail. So it's going to be. Uh, All fail. None One, of them two, could two. even okay, make yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you stealth forward. Make me a perception check now. Because ah! now you're actively looking. Eighteen. Wow, 18. that perception's pretty high. Yeah, not bad at Oops. all. So, you get a little bit closer, and you still hear that voice. You also notice a few more things. So you've snuck up to where the door is hanging by a hinge. You're using that for cover. You're peeking between, and you see it in this larger room, standing in a corner almost as if deactivated. This large to you, humanoid in shape in that it has, is bipedal with two legs and two arms, but very few of the pieces on it seem to have belonged to the same creature at first. Therefore it is, because of what the alchemist had access to, the proportions are wildly off on this, with one arm small, one long and hanging past its, or to the middle of its shins. It has a weird slump to its back and shoulders. Its head, even, is made out of two different heads. One looks like salamander, one kobold. So large and then small shrunken pieces, all stitched and sewn together. And there are these four winged, red, small horned things that are perched, one on its head and three on its shoulders, and are picking pieces of flesh off as they're hunched over and... And all the while you hear from the opposite direction inside the room, though you don't see where... Good, good specimen, yes. Well preserved, in perfect condition. Good. And you hear the sound of bone snapping. Um, so, gonna pull over the door. Um, going to pantomime throwing up. Then going to sneak back. 
over to my friends. Put both hands on my little bit of hips. Okay, so Crunch, I fully thought that it was a totem pole of bodies. It is not, in fact, a totem pole of bodies. It is a melted lump of clay. And it is currently, I think, being consumed by the wingy thingy you were talking about, which are imps. Um, and, um, well, I'm just going to say, my guys, the vibe is off in there. So if we want to go fuck it up, I think we should. We deserve it. We've been so good. So what you're saying is the monstrosity, the totem pole, the blob, the flesh is not alive. It doesn't really look alive. I mean, it's just kind of like, this is it. Let me, I'll show you. <clears throat> like that. Yeah. yeah, that's what it looked like. Okay. <laughs> So what's stopping us from just walking in there and talking to the alchemist? He is supposed to be our friend, is he not? I think at first we should see if we can talk to him before we do fighting. The last time I fought someone, I killed them. I didn't even mean to. Yeah, but pretty cool. Imagine what you could do if you did mean to. Holy right. shit. Mm -hmm. I would be dead if you meant to. Okay, so, so, we, so we should sneak in, sneak in and try to talk? I mean, if we're sneaking in, that's going to make it seem suspicious. If Let's go knock. No yeah, let's just go knock on the door. Or lack of doors. Crunch, is that what happened to the... <laughs> is that what, is well, that what the other spun did when the door exploded? Well, Crunch was there. Crunch... I guess got there late because that door went boom, flew off, splat, splat, gurgle, gurgle, rip and tear, and um, that's where we're at now. Hmm. But I, I think Crunch thinks that maybe we have a better chance because there isn't a door mm -hmm. there to fly off. And the alchemist can see us clearly instead of, you know, someone being mysterious behind a door. I mean, if we didn't want to show our full hand, we could easily let a few go in and a few stay out. Xandris, what were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to knock on the door. Frame. Announce. We're coming in. Xandris, we can just go in together. The two of us, and you guys hold back, and we'll scream if we need you. Yeah, if you just walk in all confident, like, yo, in the place, nobody really questions it. Exactly. You walk like you know what you're doing, and nobody stops you. So if we walk in there with confidence, mm -hmm. nobody will stop us. It'll be fine. We'll talk to him. And if we need help, we'll start screaming, or we'll get tossed out of the door and die. I question Does that work for you, Daddy? Okay. That's just fair. Yeah. You divide, just... divide. Half of us go in, half of us hold back. Just don't lie to him. Okay. Per se. Why? You know, well, well, um, Crunch thinks that just be honest to a point where, hey, we're trying to stop the blue scales from getting the treasure, and we got to get across the river of lava. And we need your help. Right. I mean, that is the truth, and I did plan on saying that. Anybody else want to go? I mean, we might as well all just go, right? Oh, well, that wasn't, that wasn't, that little part wasn't for you, Zan. It was to you, Kibbles. Oh. I will promise you I will not talk. Zan just can all, do all the talking. She's very... Confident and lovely to listen to, and I'm terrible. So, we'll get Xandris to do it. Is that okay, Xandris? Are you okay with talking? Yeah, I like to move my word hole. Um, I don't think I'm pretty good at it. Uh, but if anybody wants to come, I mean, I'm totally fine. I, I, I don't know, like performance anxiety or anything. So, if you want to come, you should come. If not, I mean, maybe don't. 
fucking be there with you. I'm, I'm gonna that- take that as a sign you want one more person. Let's three of us go and let's go quick. And then if we need anything else, we'll call for y'all. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Okay. I will follow those two. So Daphne, Xandris, and Kibbles are heading in. Onyx and Crunch are hanging behind. So then, as the three of you approach this door, first of all, I do want to note there aren't any blue scale bodies out here. Nice. Just want to make sure that's very clear. Um, So you approach where one door is lying on the ground about seven feet from the entryway. The other hangs off its hinges. These three small kobolds approaching. What are the three of you doing as you approach? Gibbles? Can I, having followed Sandris and Daphne in... Um, well, I was asking if there was anything you wanted to do before you went fully... In. Oh, like, okay. were you all announcing I, yourselves? One thing I want to do right as we enter, but if they have anything they want to do, I haven't talked. Um. No, I don't think so. Okay. Sup, queen lovers? Okay. So, as sup, clean, or queen yeah. lovers, uh, echoes through the cavern. As you step in, the very first thing that happens is the small creatures that had alighted on this flesh golem take off and <clears throat> hit the length of the chain, followed by <laughs> like pointing and chittering your direction. And the thing starts to move. More like a creature... <laughs> this is the best analogy I can provide that is very much an anachronism. Though it works in the world, too. You ever had to lead that drunk friend somewhere, and they are very much out on their feet, and they are just, the feet are moving, and you are controlling the direction. That is exactly what seems to be happening with the chains and this creature. As they the chains hit the length that they go, it kind of... <clears throat> takes a step forward and gives them slack. And then when they hit the length of chain again. <clears throat> Kibbles, you said there was something you wanted to do as soon as you stepped in. To hide. I want to stealth and vanish from the two in front of me. Make me a stealth check. And as you are making that, you hear from the left of the door the sound of metal tools clattering onto a tray. Yeah, who is more filthy blue scales? What do you want? You betray the dragon queen again! And this... Oh, word up, blue scales. This dragonborn with one huge eye and the other comically small in comparison comes around the door and has a potion vial in its hand. Oh. What do oh. you want? We're not blue scales. Uh, Absolutely not. Filthy red, blue scales, those we're, bastards. We're actually here because we're red scales attempting to stop the blue scales from what they're doing to the big pile. But we we need the password to get the boats. You are protector of the Dragon mm. Queen's wishes then? Mm. Yes. I'm going to pull out a medal that I just keep in my pocket. He... <laughs> lowers the flask that was in his hand, steps forward out of the door and reaches behind him to go close it. But in that moment, Kibbles, what was your stealth check? 21. No, uh, he does not see you. Um, But in that moment, all of you are able to see through the door before he shuts it. And what you see is... Not unexpected, but is uncomfortable nonetheless. As you see several tables, slabs with kobold bodies in various states of, let's say, wholeness. You do see one that definitely has scales that tend more towards the red than purple, but the vast majority, including a few that you see just piled on the floor now, are blue 
bluer in their hue as he shuts the door behind him. I give you this word, and you leave and protect the Dragon Queen, yes? Mm -hmm. Make me a persuasion check. Can Xanders and I do it together since we're both trying to convince there, that that, we're... that is what takes it to not disadvantage. But there is there are significant factors here that are make would have made it be disadvantaged. Like the fact that he was just attacked. He's a okay. little, little on edge. Okay, so I have a sixteen plus six for a twenty two. Give word as representative of the Red Scales, then my work will not be interrupted. I give you word. I am left alone. Uh, Sandris, yes, we we can we'll we'll we will go take care of it to make sure you are left alone. Yes. I mean, right, yeah, Sandris. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just trying to get our job done because it's a, the Dragon Queen's coming back and we want to make sure everything's cool and she comes back. And, and and we just want to do the right thing, you know what I mean, by the Dragon Queen, but, like, uh, it's going to be weird yeah. about it. But you give it's us totally the word. do what you said anyway. You give us the word, we'll be out of here. I swear <laughs> on the Dragon Queen's holy name first. Ooh, that's kind of a sin, my guy. But, yeah, I mean, if you, that's what you need. And he uh, puts a fing a clawed finger up to you, walks across past where Kibbles is hiding without even noticing, walks into another room, and you hear the sound of clinking glass. And he emerges, and he... Good, yes, yes. <laughs> Drink this first. Make okay, sure what? that you are not lying to me. Can I, like, look at it? It's a clear liquid. I don't think it'll help me, but can I, like, does it look poisoned? You can. <laughs> if you want, you could, like, pop it and do one of these things to yeah, get a yeah, little taste. Yeah, to see, does it, does it... Make me an arcana check. Oh. Oh my gosh, wait, I actually rolled really well. I know. But it's a plus zero. It's a okay. 19. 18? Um, 19. 19? You do not... Um, that one. Hmm. That one might make the difference. I don't know. The... Um, with a 19, this will, you feel like, have detrimental effects but it is also a truth serum. I feel like it's kind Detrimental of- Detrimental effects. It, it, with a 19, it would uh, mess with your stomach and your uh, constitution for a little while, Oof. not too long lasting. With a 19, you have some familiarity with this potion and its main purpose, yeah, it can make you a little sick, but its main purpose is to ensure you tell the truth. Okay. Well, I know I'm telling the truth, hmm. so I'll, I'll I, take the thing. Could you make me a constitution saving throw, please? <laughs> I don't think that'll be very good. Oh, I have slightly better stats. Okay. 15 plus two. 17. 15. Okay. After you drink it. Tell me it again now. Okay. We need to go to the big pile to stop the blue scales. And if I help you? We'll leave to go to the pile to stop the blue scales. And? And leave you alone so you can get back to your work? And stop others from coming to you? Because we are stopping them? Oh, my the stomach kind of hurts. The word for the speaking stone is Gomshath, which translates 
uh, more or less in contemporary uh, draconic to sizzle boat. Sandra, do you have like a pin? I got a steel trap, baby. Musically inclined. I got it. It's gone under chat. It's sizzle boat. Okay, you got it. I got it, baby. Now. I mean, I got it. I need to take some ginger. For the record, you don't actually feel bad. Uh, You could be playing this up, but you passed your constitution save. So, you're fine. Uh, That's rare. Wait, wait, Sandra's. Sandra's. I'm going to just like, as I'm looking for ginger in my pocket, pull out a tiny wire, and I'm just going to be like, where's? And that's it. Kels is right there. <clears throat> okay. Get an angle Let's over. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, I'm just going to start leaving. <laughs> Bye. Uh, as, you, leave. as you start to leave, the alchemist looks over to the monstrosity. Sweetling, make sure they are gone. And the thing, the the chittering creatures start to pull the chains the direction of the door as it um can Sandra actually stop upon seeing this why are you stopping whoa whoa what's this what's this get out whoa 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 okay okay in the name of the dragon queen bye god that guy seems really shitty kibbles what are you doing he helped so, us. As they were doing that, can and I have been jump perusing over to Onyx and Crunch? Can I have been perusing the shelves um, so for anything that you looks mean physically perusing, as in getting up to look at them, or from your hiding spot looking around? I think first I would kind of look around where I'm hiding and if there's any like racks of bottles or boxes on this room itself doesn't have a ton of those however you do notice a total of four doorways in here there's the one that the alchemist first came through and closed behind him there's the one that he went into to retrieve that potion and there are two more at the farther end So, door, 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 you. I think as he went in the room to get the potion, I would have stuck to one of the far doors. In that case, make me another stealth check. And I will need to know left or right. We're going to go with left. Okay. I'm going to come on pike dice. Don't betray me. Ooh, not too bad. That is a 19. Definitely beats his passive. Okay, so you manage to open this door, get in, close it behind you while the alchemist was retrieving the truth serum. You've entered what looks like the alchemist's sleeping quarters. There's a large cabinet. There is a small, well, (laughs) not really small, he's a dragonborn. There is a relatively large bed for you. Um... Those are the main things of interest in this room. Now, the cabinet certainly might have stuff in it, but it is closed at this moment. There are other basic living items in here, a wash bowl, change of clothes, all that. Can I search, like, can I look underneath his bed and, like, under the mattress, like, where people would normally hide things of value, like, under his pillow, maybe? Bed seems clean. Well, not clean, but not uh, stuffed with goodies. All right. Uh, I guess I'm going to go to the wardrobe and open it up and look for anything that looks valuable or like it would be missed. All right, you go to open it. Could you make me a dexterity saving throw as you open the cabinet and this small little trap has a gout of acid that sprays right at your face. 
All right. Uh, I'll give luck yeah. points to help this if needed. I will too. Oh, no need. That was a 20. Oh my. <laughs> Manage to dodge as this whoosh, and where it lands. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, where it lands behind you, which is kind of near the door, not right in front of it, but where it ends up landing, sizzles. And the very stone of the floor starts to be eaten away. That said, you continue to open, and what you do see in here is uh, a thing that looks like a crystal ball, a clay relatively large clay jug with numerous different corks and stoppers in it, a wand, and another wand, and a bottle of red wine. I'm going to shove both wands in my pants. I'm going to take the crystal ball and put that in a pocket. Um, and then I'm going to take the bottle of wine um, and try to hide that, but I'm going to leave the jug just due to its, its size. I don't want it to be like super obvious if I am caught. Um, so I'll leave the jug. And I'm then going to take out my knife and I'm going to scratch in the back of the cabinet. Kibbles was here. And then just close it up and slowly make my way out. Little shit. Uh, I need one <laughs> final stealth check from you. Keep in mind, you are competing against six perceptions. They are their passives with two, with a few exceptions who are on active watch. Alright. Come on, Percy. Fail. Probably. No, that was, uh, that was 20. No, I was talking about mine. Oh, shit. I'm like, did I fail with the 20? Ooh, and with a the highest of them as a 17. Kibbles, could you please describe? Because I'll say that this took just about as much time as the conversation your two friends were having. And so as you step out, you see as they are leaving and you see as the creature is walking towards the door while the alchemist is walking back into the dissection room. So how do you make it out stealthily? You do, but how? Oh, go as quickly as I can. Um, and I'm assuming even if I went as quick as possible, I wouldn't get in front of the golem. Not really. You'll probably have to go around or yeah, underneath. Yeah, I will sneak. Or at this point, I will stop sneaking, and I'm just going to race through the golem's leg and be like, sorry, sorry, I uh, had to pee. And I'm just going to... Follow after them. The four imps start pointing and chittering your direction. And you hear from the other room as the creaking door is uh, closing. Yes, yes, my sweetling, quiet now. Much more to do. While this has been happening, what have Crunch and Onyx been up to? So... That's the reason why I say crunch all the time. I, I just feel like it's an act, and I I have to keep it up. It's, it happened when I was little, and I just... I don't like being angry, you know? And I'm actually a really nice kobold, and I have interests other than, oh, I carry a big axe around, and I kill things. And I, I don't know, man. I just, just kind of have to keep up the charade now. I know you're you're more than you seem. We all do. I'm proud of you. Thanks. I hope the others what? are okay. <laughs> At about that time, I'm sure they're fine. Uh, Xandris and Daphne, with a quick on their heels, I gotta pee! Uh, or I had to pee! Kibbles come running out, and the uh, creature, the abomination, is walking towards the door. Keep going, 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 keep going. 
Go, 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 go! Crunch, I think they want us to go. Eh. Yeah, I think so. Crunch thinks so, too. Okay, Let, let's well, go. Crunch, we have the word. Oh. Well, congratulate. Good job, guys. As Xandris is, like, way ahead, it sizzled out! <laughs> Don't shout it! <laughs> it sizzled out! Wait, okay. wait, hold on. One, two, three. Okay, let, let's let go. We watch. So we oh, pick up the pace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we watch as our five kobolds hustle, now armed with this knowledge, return to the cavern where the lava river has this pier built in and say the passphrase and you don't get a response from the stone. But instead, what feels like an eternity later, coming towards you from the, li- the river of lava approaching you is this obsidian boat, propelled by no wind or oars, simply of its own machinations, approaches you and slides smoothly up to the pier on this bright red orange river of lava. And as our five kobolds warily step in and go where certainly none of them has ever gone before, let's take a quick break and we will jump back in right here, friends. So please go take care of whatever you need to take care of while we do the same. It'll only be about five minutes, so don't go anywhere and we We'll see you soon.